In this video, we're going to talk about budget PCs, more specifically, the B-Link S13 Mini. This is a budget Windows 11 PC aimed at light use cases such as content consumption. For example, this is great for watching videos on Netflix, browsing Facebook, checking emails, and doing some light work using Microsoft Office or Google suite of applications. I would like to thank B-Link for sending this product for testing. They reached out to me to do a completely non-biased review, and I'll do my best to cover everything in detail so that we can decide if this is a good fit for you. Inside the box, you'll find some manuals and the PC itself. You'll get an HDMI cable and a power adapter. Beeling did a great job packaging this PC into a, such a small form factor. As for the device itself, the front you see a power button, a headphone jack, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and then a clear CMOS button. This button lets you reset the BIOS in the event you mess up the settings or tweak the BIOS. On the back, you'll find two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one one gigabit ethernet port, and then two HDMI ports that support 4K displays. And finally, you get the power input slot. Besides this, inside the box, you also get the mounting bracket in case you wanna mount this to your desk. As for the pricing, with discounts and everything, right now you can pick this up on Amazon for $160. I'll link it in the description below. Now let's talk about the specs. The B-Link S13 Mini is a great PC that takes your full desktop PC and compresses it into a tiny form factor. In terms of size, it's even smaller than the Apple's new Mac Mini. This PC operates with a remarkably low power consumption, only drawing 10 to 25 watts during normal processing. It also utilizes Intel's Twinlink N150 processor, which has four cores with maximum speeds of 3.6 gigahertz. In terms of memory, you get 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 3200 megahertz. It also has Intel graphics, which can do some very light gaming. And I mean very, very light gaming. But all these features are focused on light office use and home usage, which includes browsing, media consumption, checking emails, and doing some light work such as writing, working on spreadsheets, or presentations. Other notable specs include Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and 1 gig Ethernet LAN in case you want to plug it in. This PC comes with 512 gigabytes of NVMe SSD, which can be upgraded to four terabytes. Also, you can insert an additional NVMe SSD for additional storage. You can easily open up the device by undoing the four screws, and then you can see the exposed internals. Mainly, if you want to insert a new SSD, this is the place you would do it. I connected everything and booted the device. I was immediately presented with the Windows setup screen. The Windows setup took around 50 minutes, and that was all down to Windows taking all the stupid updates. When getting a new device, I want to get in as soon as possible and start using it. But then here I was presented with all these installing for updates. And also, another thing I did not enjoy was signing into this device using a Microsoft account, which was inconvenient because I didn't have one to begin with. I prefer using local Windows account, which does not make you sign into Microsoft. And I didn't want to use any cloud services, so that wouldn't let me happen. So I went ahead and signed up for a Microsoft account and then signed into the device that way. Once I was in there, I went ahead and created a local account and then moved on. Let's see how this device handles all the synthetic benchmarks. I started off by using Geekbench and ran the CPU's test. The Intel N150 scored around 1189 for a single core performance. To put that into comparison, the new Mac Mini scored 3711 for a single core. If you do the math, this PC is around 3.1 times or 70% slower than the Mac Mini but it's 3.7 times or 73% cheaper than the Mac Mini. I know we're comparing apples to oranges, but I just wanted to mention it out there to put things into perspective. Moving on to the multi-core performance, the Intel N150 achieved a score of 2916, which isn't even in the same league as the Mac Mini. However, it's important to remember that the B-Link S13 Mini is designed for light use cases such as basic productivity tasks, and it is not intended for gaming or intensive workloads. For its target audience, this offers a compelling balance of price and functionality. Moving on with the benchmarks, next I did a speed test to see how fast the SSD performed. The sequential write speeds were 398 megabytes per second, and the read speeds were 507 megabytes per second. This is not as fast by any means, but it should be fine as it offers decent read-write speeds. Now I can go on and on with multiple synthetic benchmarks, but I decided to start testing this device 
by doing some light browsing, some video editing, and some light gaming just to see where this stands. I started by downloading and installing Google Chrome. I then opened around 14 tabs. Some were news articles, some were YouTube videos, and some were just uh, random websites. Overall, my CPU usage reached around 100% for the most part. But overall, during my browsing session, I didn't notice any lags or freezing. For watching YouTube videos, I checked the stat for nerds and first I started to drop frame rates. I realized that this was happening mainly because I was doing the screen recording. So when I was doing that, it was affecting the frame rates. When I stopped recording the screen and I redid my test, I did not notice any frame drops when watching YouTube videos. I also worked on Google Sheets and then using Google Docs via the Chrome browser, and then everything seemed to perform just as normal. For watching videos and browsing any type of content and doing any kind of content consumption, this device is pretty good. Next, I focused on content creation. For that, I installed DaVinci Resolve, that's my primary editing software, and then I attempted to edit some 4K footage. Navigating through timeline was quite laggy, and then playback was also quite laggy because the frame rates were dropping. Then I attempted to render a 4K video, which was around 5 minutes and 15 seconds long, and then that took around 8 minutes and 24 seconds to render. During the rendering, the device was slightly warm, but then the fan kicked on, which was not that loud. It was sort of a laptop fan noise. When editing a 1080p video, that was much more manageable. I downloaded some stock footage and then started to stitch and combine and edit them in the timeline. The timeline frames did not drop as much when doing the playback. Even if they did, it was very slightly and then the frame rates came right back up. So I think this is very manageable. So to conclude, if you're trying to edit videos, you can edit 1080p files without any issues, but doing a 4K editing might be a big stretch. Now, I did not do any color grading or color editing, and if you're trying to do that professional level of editing, this device might be out of the question, even for a 1080p. Next, I decided to do some gaming. Considering that this PC is not designed for gaming, as it's intended for office type scenarios, I still decided to play some games. I downloaded and installed Counter-Strike 2, and initially I was experiencing only eight to nine frames per second. After playing for a while and allowing the cache to build up, I still managed to get no more than 23 frames per second. Overall, it was completely unplayable. I played the older Counter-Strike Source, which was from the early 2000s, and that worked fine. I got a decent 90 to 100 frames per second. I also installed City and Skylines. Again, it was not playable, and then I got a lot of errors when trying to launch it, so overall not playable. Next, I focused on Microsoft Store to see what kind of games they have to offer and then what could be playable on this device. I managed to get Asplat Legends working, the gameplay was smooth, but the graphics were quite poor. Maybe that's how they were, but they just feel very inferior. So the type of games you can primarily play on this device are the ones that you find on your mobile device, such as Candy Crush, Asphalt Legends. And most of these games are available on the Microsoft Store, and then most of these are for free. Beyond that, you cannot do any kind of gaming. Based on my initial testing, I believe this device is excellent choice for watching videos on YouTube, watching videos or movies on Netflix, and then other streaming platforms. It's also great for browsing the web, reading articles, checking email, or checking your social media sites like Facebook, Reddit, and the others. While you can play some light games on this device, mainly found on the Microsoft Store, don't expect to play any recent titles on this device. The games you can play on this device are more close to the ones that you find on your mobile device, like Candy Crush, Asphalt, or any games that you find mainly on your mobile device. Beyond that, I think this can be easily used as a Linux home server, and I'll be testing for that in a future video. So let me know if you're interested in the comments below. In conclusion, I would say you can do most of these things on an iPad, but if you prefer a traditional desktop running Windows operating system, then this is a great alternative. For its current price listed at $169, this is a decent PC, but I think beyond that price point, I don't recommend it. It's equipped with an Intel N150 processor, which has 16 gigs of RAM. It can handle your daily activities like browsing the web, doing social media consumption, or doing any kind of content consumption. Also, if you're using Microsoft Office, such as Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, then this is a great device for running those applications. But do keep in mind that this device does have limited processing power and may struggle with more demanding applications like high-end gaming or intensive content creation. Well, folks, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.